Hey guys, Jeff Hall here with Ryan Smith and Jared Corver. We're financial advisors at Beacon Wealth Care. There was the announcement made of a big acquisition in the tech space here in the Triangle this week, and that means that a lot of employees are gonna see their benefits packages changing over the next year or so. And so we thought we'd put together a video uh, where we discuss some different proactive things that you might be able to do if you're a, an employee at a company that's being acquired. So Jared and Ryan um, can be a, a pretty big, mean a lot of changes in your benefits package mm -hmm. if you work for a company that's being acquired. Mm -hmm. Can you guys think of some things that you can do proactively to prepare for the changes that are coming down the pike? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind as you're navigating this, this kind of change is that you're gonna get a whole new 401k plan. And so, yeah. You're gonna to have to be picking out new 401k options. You wanna make sure also that you update beneficiary designations on the new plan. Uh, and then with your old 401k plan, you're gonna have some options there. You could either move it into the new account, you could move it over to an advisor. If you're working with an advisor, you could also just move it into an IRA, a rollover IRA, where you can be making the investment decisions yourself. Uh, along the same lines with the 401k plan, your new employer isn't gonna know what you contributed to your old employer plan. And so you, if you split your time, you've made some earnings and you made some contributions mm -hmm. with an old job, you need to make sure that you don't over contribute into the new 401k plan. And so just be mindful of that, make a, make a note about how much you put into the old 401k and then set it up so that you don't contribute more than the IRS limits into your new plan. Uh, but also with things like FICA tax or social security tax, and that's about 6.2% on the first 127 or $128,000 of income. Again, if you're splitting time between two different employers, they're not going to know how much you've earned at the prior employer, how much Social Security tax you've paid. And so there's a chance that you may pay too much Social Security tax. And that's okay. You can get that money back, but you just want to make sure that when you file your taxes, if you do it yourself, just be aware of that. If you work with a CPA, just make sure that the CPA knows about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good points. Uh, it also makes me think a little bit about insurance, life insurance, disability. A lot of people get their... Uh, insurance coverage through their employer, what kind of changes should people be looking out for and what can they do to prepare for those types of changes in their insurance coverage? Yeah, so you know, this came up in our benefits video a few weeks ago where we talked about, hey, group coverage can be great, but there are some things to watch out for uh, just around portability and, and your ability to stay insured at, at the level your family needs. So this is just an opportunity to, make, to maybe look at the open market again and see, hey, is there a way that we can get appropriate coverage at a good rate? Because there's no guarantee the next employer is going to offer as generous a package. You may not be able to get as much. It may be right. a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, just use this time period as a, you know, a way to, to do some due diligence mm -hmm. in the open market. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also, you know, we don't typically think of this as pure insurance, but it may be an opportunity just to increase your emergency fund or the cash you hold, um, just to buy yourself some flexibility. I mean, ideally, there's not gonna be uh, any real fear for losing your job, but it is a change, and, and change is always a time where we appreciate some additional liquidity and cash on the side. So mm -hmm. um, those are just some things around insurance and something like insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a conversation today with somebody about restricted stock units. So what do you think about you know, employees working for a company that's being acquired, they have restricted stock units or an employee stock purchase plan? What kind of stuff do they need to be thinking about you know, as this potential acquisition goes through? You know, at a high level, you know, restricted stock units and employee stock purchase plans and even some others are just a way for your company to compensate you with employer stock. And so when you think of a liquidation event like this where one company is buying another, that stock is going away. You know, there's gonna be a date where that is gonna be a forced sell of some sort. Um, and it can get really technical. So really all we wanna say is use this opportunity to talk with your advisor uh, and come up with a good plan. There's gonna be some, some opportunities with your tax preparer to mm -hmm. Make sure you're withholding enough taxes because you'd probably be in a higher bracket than you would have otherwise. Um, and so, again, this is just an opportunity to um, do some planning you would have normally done anyways, but this is just forcing the timeline a little bit quicker than it would have otherwise. Those are some great thoughts. Guys, thanks for watching. Uh, we want you to know that uh, these kind of things are things that we all need to be tackling anyways, and these are things that we tackle all the time at Beacon Wealth Care. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or concerns or things that you want to talk through. You know where to find us.